Hey y'all, welcome to the Cajun Crock-Pot where we take great Cajun recipes and make them in a slow cooker. Today we are cooking very traditional Cajun food, red beans and rice in a slow cooker. Here we go. The weather's getting a little bit cooler. We're gonna cook some little heartier dishes. And one of my favorites to cook is a red beans and rice, very traditional Cajun. And using a Crock-Pot, it is so easy. But the best way, the best recipes that come out, the best cooking that's done, always depends on great preparation. And so we're gonna start with super good prep here. We're gonna take two pounds of camellia red beans, okay? And we're gonna dump those into a bowl. Come so, okay? We need this, no, we don't need that. All right, then we're gonna take these, this two pounds, and we're gonna just put some water right over the top of it. Now check why you're putting water in there. You're gonna put that in the microwave? No, no, we're gonna let these beans soak up all this water sort of uh, overnight. And you wanna put just enough that you get a little bit of glaze over the top of it. Now, we're gonna take some Pima's seasoning for seafood, okay? The seafood boil. You're gonna take two tablespoons of Pima's seafood boil. You're gonna put it right on top of the beans. Okay, Chuck, that's kind of wrong. Are we gonna put this, are we gonna make a, a boiling here? No, we're just gonna let it sit. We're gonna let these beans uh, absorb not only this water, but also this flavoring. All right, just stir it up nice and nice and easy. You see the water's got a little bit of a brownish red color to it. That's supposed to be there, okay? And we're gonna put this on the side and we're gonna uh, leave it on the countertop. Some people put it in the fridge. I just prefer to just leave it on the countertop overnight, overnight, and you'll see it's gonna be nice and big and poofy, okay? All right, so here's our situation. Now we have our beans that have been sitting out overnight. Nudge, nudge, wink, wink, because it's television. Okay, we've had our beans that were sitting out overnight with the water and the, uh, the Pima's seafood boil mixed in, all right? And then we have our chicken stock we're gonna use. We're gonna have our trinity, which is our, our bell pepper, our onion, and our celery. And then kind of the mainstay is our protein, which is gonna be our Veyron's smoked sausage. And it is our green onion, my favorite. And you'll see it's gonna just be nicely homogenous, it's gonna look beautiful. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna chop all this stuff up, put it, in the, put it in the pot, stir it up, add some chicken. We're not gonna chop up the chicken broth, that's just being silly. But we're gonna put the chicken broth in there, about six cups worth, and we'll set it on low and it's gonna let it cook, okay? So here we go. All right, y'all, we got our checklist done here. We got our prep, check. We've got our beans in the pot with the seafood boil, two pounds of red kidney beans with the seafood boil in there, ready to go, flavor. We also have our green onion uh, smoked sausage from Veyron's flavor. And then we have our Trinity right here, which is our onions, bell pepper, uh, red and green bell pepper, by the way, and celery flavor. So what do we have in the pot? We have flavor, flavor, oh, and more flavor. All right, so the next thing we've done, now that we've got our prep work done, so to speak, now we're gonna start cooking. So the next things that are happening here, we're putting in our chicken broth. So our chicken broth is gonna go right in on the top. Now, because we're using about two pounds of uh, of our red kidney beans and about uh, two pounds of other stuff. We're gonna use four cups total, four cups of our chicken stock, all right? Right and over the top. And again, it doesn't have to be in any particular order. It doesn't have to look any particular way. It doesn't have to be, even be pretty. This is just putting it all together because we're about to stir it up and make a mess anyway, okay? So that's the first four cups of chicken stock. Boom, ba-doom, 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 ba-doom. And then we're gonna put the other two cups right from here. Dropped in over the top. Now, for me, six cups doesn't really mean anything. I just like to put enough fluid in there to see it kind of come right over the top. Okay, so that's right about between five and six cups, and that's cool. And then the next big ingredient, always, Pima's Cajun Shake. Got to have your Pima's Cajun Shake. It's almost like Pima's red beans and rice, don't you think? All right, so we're just gonna put a nice layer of Pima's right over the top. Never too much Pima's. All right, and now we're gonna stir it all together. Let me grab my trusty spoon here. We've got our rice cooking over here, so we're gonna just stir it right up. All right? You wanna get everything on top of everything else because we want all the flavors to touch. Now it's like, you know, Chuck, you got some chunky uh, onion pieces and chunky veggies in there. Yeah, but you know what? That's all gonna cook down. I'm telling you, my kids do not like to see me put onions in my food, but they like the flavor of the onions. So when we put this in to cook down, that's all gonna get kicked down and go away. You'll see when we reveal it in the end, you will not really see any chunks of veggies. You're just gonna see a nice dark color red beans and some uh, dark sausage that's cooked up really nice, all right? And that is, that is it, guys. We're gonna put this dude on medium. 
for about six to eight hours, or you can cook it on high for four to six hours, all right? And that's all you do. Bam, it's ready to go. And we're gonna reveal what it looks like in just a minute, so stick around. Okay, y'all, it's time for the big reveal. So let's take a look and see what we got. Now remember, this has been cooking for about eight hours, nine hours, all right? Oh, but look at that, that's beautiful. Now, as promised, remember we talked, we had all those big chunky vegetables in there and notice all of that is cooked down and it's become basically invisible, which is lovely because my children don't like me putting onions and things in the uh, in my recipes, but what they don't know doesn't really hurt them. All right, and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this guy here, Looking good is one thing, but tasting good, that's where it's at. So we're gonna pour, pour ourselves out a little bowl. Some white, some white rice with a little parsley on top of it, just for looks. Okay. Rice by itself and it looks kind of one dimensional, so we, we put a little parsley in it. Now, I promised you at the beginning this was gonna be a two level up show. So guess what? The second level up is yellow mustard. What? What? Yellow mustard? Yeah, we're gonna take some yellow mustard. And this is a very New Orleans thing. My, my parents uh, met, fell in love, got married and everything in New Orleans. And so my, my father used to eat this with his red beans this way. A little, red, little mustard right on the top. <laughs> Excuse me, my letter match. And this is how we do it. My children love this so much when we make red beans and rice, the first question is, where's the mustard, okay? So now we've got our double level up happening. Let's give it a taste and see what we got. Oh, guys, it smells so good. <laughs> this is the stuff, guys. Listen, thanks for joining us today. And again, I'm late with this. I'm sorry. But we appreciate you watching. Don't forget to subscribe. God bless you. God bless America. And God bless this food because I already started eating it. <laughs> All right. See you all next time. A long cuisine.